Hi, my name is Sapora Green. I am a social worker in Muncie. I work for Project R in Muncie Medical Center. And I specialize in addictions in school. I have worked with clients that are struggling with addiction. I do not exclusively work with clients that are struggling with addiction and substance use. And is it children, adults? What age, age range do you usually work with? So I normally work with anyone north of like 15, 16 years old, primarily at this point women. I have worked with adolescent boys in the past. At this moment at Project R, I'm seeing, you know, anywhere above 15, 16 till, you know, late adulthood, females. And how do you see when you you um, are treating a client that has a history of addiction, um, abuse or stuff like that? as they kind of go on and progress through life and if they're in good treatment, um, what, how do you see that affecting their relationships? Um, we in, At Dark Shalom, we deal with marital conflict and divorce. So a lot of times there's a mental health part. All the time there's a mental health part. So how do you see when there's been a history of abuse or um, addiction of any sort, how does that play a part in either um, the success or breakdown of a relationship? Okay, it's a great question. Um, I think it's important to distinguish between substance use and addiction. Yeah. Because where there's an addiction, it's 100% going to affect any meaningful relationship in that person's life, be it a spouse, a parent, a child, a sibling. I mean, th- when a person's at a point in an addiction where they're going to exploit anyone and anything in order to chase whatever drug of choice, alcohol, whatever it is, And that's very seriously going to affect their relationships. And normally, someone that's seriously addicted will lose the meaningful relationships in their life, one after another, until they're really down at the bottom. Generally, you know, the the more serious addicts will experience, if they're married, a divorce or close to a divorce or threats of a divorce. It's definitely going to play a part in their their journey and recovery. How do you see... What's the best things to keep in mind for people who have history like that and who are looking to have a successful, meaningful relationship? Um, What are some important things to keep in mind? Like if you're starting with a teen or even with an adult who's either entering a relationship um, with an addict or what are things that they should be mindful of? Well, a really big part of recovery for an addict, and this is like very new age and this is very people are coming to recognize this more now where it used to be the recovery was stop using drugs and we're going to put you in these really really rigorous rehabs and they're going to like test you every day and give you all these meds to stop you from taking other drugs today we're we're leaning towards more of an understanding that it's really coming from a place that has a lack of connection right and the person is probably and most likely extremely hurt in some way and it doesn't necessarily mean that we can deduce by who you know sometimes people right. are very quick to judge like oh this person is an addict you know he must have grown up in a really um unvalidating home it's not always that right. way or there must have been sexual abuse right. or something it's not always that way someone could have grown up in a home with loving parents and other adverse things have happened in their life that have completely derailed them and, and, you know, lowered their self-worth to the point where they're searching for that other thing that, you know, they keep chasing that high. Right. And so I guess the person that's entering a relationship with them will need to know that if they're not yet at a place of like real stable recovery, it's going to be a, you're going to be signing up for really being part of this person's healing journey because they will not be able to heal without the people in their life rallying around them and feeding them with support and love and reassurance and positive regard. So how do you play a role and be of support without crossing that line of becoming a caretaker? That's a good question. You mean like for a spouse? Like you don't want to become the mother. Exactly. How do you try to avoid that dynamic? Hmm. Because once you enter into it, it's rough. Right. It's a hard line to cross between saying, I'm here for you unconditionally. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to do what I can to support you, but I'm not going to do it for you. Right. I'm not going to 
you know, do the work for you. I can hug you and support you and tell you that I think you're doing an amazing job, you know, and that person will likely need to be supported themselves. Right. Because pouring this much energy into one person, you're pouring it from somewhere. Yeah. And you're going to need support yourself as well. Yeah, that's an important piece that the supporter needs support. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 